Welcome to Conversations That Matter. This episode is brought to you by Audlem Brown, a client-focused investment firm that starts client relationships with straightforward conversations focused on you, your aspirations, and your investment priorities. Audlem Brown has been a supporter of Conversations That Matter from the day we started the show. Their only condition was that we provide a non-biased conversation with people from all sides of all sorts of issues. Of course, we couldn't produce this show without the support of Oh Boy Productions. If you're looking to produce a cast, be it video or a podcast, I suggest you reach out to Oh Boy. They can help you produce it and they can help you build your audience. And we also need your support. I ask you to please pledge $1 per show at conversationsthatmatter.tv forward slash donate because those dollars add up and they play an important role in helping us to produce this show. Now to this week's episode. It's a great big audacious goal, defeating cancer that is, but that's exactly what the team at Vancouver-based Zymeworks plans to do. The biotech company has developed protein therapeutics for the treatment of cancer and for autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. They're also developing a new delivery system and research process. The process and the next generation therapeutics they've created allow for the targeting of differentiated biological pathways that lead to internal partnered therapies. Those targeting platforms have names like Azymmetric Platform and Zymlink Conjugation Platform and Cytotoxins. The azymmetric platform, for example, spontaneously assembles antibodies into a single molecule that can easily adapt to rapidly screen, target, and sequence combinations of biospecific activities which significantly reduce drug development timelines. The company's lead product, ZW25, is currently being elevated to phase 2 clinical trials targeting two distinct domains of the human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, otherwise known as HERS-2, a protein that promotes the growth of cancer cells. The company was founded in 2003 and is working in partnership with global pharmaceutical companies such as Merck's, Eli Lilly, Johnson & Johnson, and others. However, in addition to taking on cancer, Zymeworks is also playing a fundamental role in ensuring Vancouver becomes a global center of excellence in biotech. The company is led by Dr. Ali Tarani, who holds degrees in biochemistry from the University of Massachusetts and has a doctoral degree in microbiology and immunology from UBC. Not only is he a brilliant scientist, but he also has an impressive track record in leadership, having been awarded the UBC Faculty of Science Achievement Award for Outstanding Leadership in 2002. Dr. Tarani says, we've done a really good job of educating brilliant scientists and then watch them leave Canada. He says he wants to give them a reason to come home. We invited Dr. Ali Tarani to join us for a conversation that matters about the biotechnical innovations that are being developed at Zymeworks and his company's role in turning Vancouver into a center of excellence and influence in scientific research. Conversations That Matter is a partner program for the Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Welcome to Conversations. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah. Zymeworks, uh, you are part of a uh, growing group of high-tech companies in British Columbia, both in computing sciences and, and biotech. I think that most people probably have no idea what's going on because you're inside an office building and we don't see you. What is Zymeworks uh, and where did it come from and, and where are we going with it? And why, more importantly, should we care in relationship to our own well-being and health? So uh, the, the simplest definition of Zymeworks is we're a clinical stage biotech company that our current focus is a number of therapeutics focused in cancer. But I'm going to break that down for you into uh, different uh, ways of understanding it. So Zymeworks is the perfect marriage between high-tech and biotech, and even biotech by itself comes from uh, the more traditional ways of talking about drug development. 
research that is really meant to impact lives. So for the longest time, the world of pharmaceutical research and design has been about what you've seen in the movies, a bunch of people with white lab coats running around in a lab pipetting mm -hmm. or uh, doing animal testing. That world has changed and has quickly evolved into the future where there are so many combinations and permutations that one needs to go through to find the right drug for a very complex illness such as cancer that humanly and, and logically it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. This is where technology comes into place. So, so is it not possible because of the complexity of the human genome and how it expresses differently in each of us and therefore our reaction to different drugs? Or is that only... Well, that's like, just a piece of it. Yeah. We're talking about so many different combinations and permutations that come as a result of how we are all different, come as a result of how we live our lives differently, come as a result of the environment we live in. So if you were to bundle all these on top of each other, you go through billions, trillions different possibilities. Mm -hmm. So can you humanly, can you possibly go through all of these in time with limited funds and come up with the best solution? And the answer is no. So oftentimes drug design in the past has about, been about the best guess. Given what I have, mm -hmm. given my limited resources, I'm going to guess as best as I can, and I hope I'm not going to get it wrong. That's why it's been very expensive. That's why drugs historically have not worked for everyone. They work for some people, not for all. That's why oftentimes they come with side effects that were not anticipated or not desirable. So the wave of the future is, can we bring computers which in essence can work round the clock, can go through more combinations and permutations and search large possibilities mm -hmm. to find the best set. So what we do at Zymeworks is we tackle cancer, many different forms of cancer. We know exactly what needs to be solved. We know where the problem is at. We just have to figure out the best way to attack it. And that best way, again, has so many different angles to it that we use the computational technology that we've developed in-house to narrow it down to the best three or four or five. Those three or four or five then go to the lab to get mm -hmm. narrowed down to the best one or two before we start human clinical trials, which is exactly where we are. Mm -hmm. So in many respects, we're bringing future to today. And our objective is to find the best solution the fastest way we can and the cheapest way we can. Because if you do it fast, you get to impact human lives. There are people today, a lot of people today that suffer from cancer and they can't wait another five or 10 or even a year. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, cost is very important because if we can do it cheaper, that saving also gets passed on as it comes down to reimbursement, as it comes down to the cost that ultimately that therapy comes down to an individual needing it. So are you developing a process that gets applied to cancer treatment or are you developing a specific theory? Because it sounds to me like from Zymeworks, you're saying we can develop this around this uh, expression of cancer, but we'll do it differently around another expression of cancer. We have the process and we have the products. So we started 15 years ago developing the process. We developed uh, a number of proprietary computational tools, which in essence allowed us to bring the lab inside the computer. As you know, throughout history, everything that was analog became digital. Mm -hmm. We're digitizing drug development. And we're probably at that last frontier of that. Everything we know today has become digital. The cameras that we are using were very different in the past. Mm -hmm. Today, they're they're completely digitized. Mm -hmm. So by bringing biotech into a computer, you get to do it faster, you get to do it better, you get to do it cheaper. So we started with the process, we started with the new tools that were necessary to tackle very well-known problems, and then we started tackling the problem. Mm -hmm. For example, 
our first product that is in the clinic and it's uh, has had about 100 patients being treated uh, through clinical trials is uh, a drug that we are currently <clears throat> studying in breast cancer and in gastric cancer. Uh, and I mean, the problem has been known for a long period in time. But what we haven't solved is how do you really help these patients um, be, be in a better place without losing their hair, without uh, after a short period of time, the tumor regrowing or showing up in a different part of the body? How do you really make a major difference? And through our computational studies, through our research, through our analyses, we found little nuances, little things that are very critical to the bigger picture. The butterfly effect. The, sometimes the most important solutions are the least obvious solutions, but they're the most critical piece of the equation. And through that extra piece of uh, computational modeling, computational analysis, we find the last piece that unlocks the whole puzzle. And what is that last piece? Because when I looked at your material, I see the these elements about what you're doing is you're binding different properties together and right. helping them work in harmony. I'm going to use the do metaphor. I, do, I, do I have that right? Yeah, there? you yeah, do. Yeah. But I'm going to use the metaphor of a lock and key. If you look at a traditional key, it's not a straight edge. Mm -hmm. It has these grooves in it. And every groove matters to ultimately the key unlocking the lock. Mm -hmm. In the old days, if you think about like in, in early 1900s, keys just had two grooves or just had one point. Yes. Today's keys have all these complexities in them. We are the ones that are finding the final grooves in the key that unlocks the lock. Great metaphor. And that's, that's the way to think about it because you half the key, even though it's the right key, still won't open the lock. Mm -hmm. The key has to go all the way in and it needs to turn. So if you even have half of it right, it will go halfway in, but it won't turn. Mm -hmm. Only when you have all the right grooves, you go all the way in and you can turn and the lock opens. The same way with our passwords, for example. If you have a password that has eight characters in it, you could get the first five right. You still are not going to unlock whatever it is that you're unlocking. Mm -hmm. Our job by using our technology is to really decode something that has been so well encrypted in, in the context of cancer. And we take every piece out and as soon as you get to the end, you open it up and you take control. So you talk about the speed with which you can move towards finding the right grooves in that key to unlock the lock. What are some of the benefits from a biological perspective? Like you're not testing on, on live animals and hoping that you're going to get some kind of outcome when you're going through all of those initial stages. There, there must be other tremendous benefits that one, for many people who are opposed to animal testing at that stage, go happy to hear that you're not doing that, but then it speeds up the process and must save you enormous amounts of money. At Zymeworks, and practically at every biotech company, we care about life no matter whichever way it comes from. We don't distinguish between a human life from, a, from an animal life. We care about life and we want to preserve it. And to your point, we want to make sure that when we have to go to animal testing, we know exactly what we're doing and we're not taking guesses so we can minimize any impact. See, the important thing about cancer research is you have to make a decision of, do I take what I have, which I think is pretty good, straight into human beings, or do I take a pause for a second between test tubes and perhaps test my theory in mice, for example. And it's that moment where you get to save human life at a small sacrifice of some mice. Mm -hmm. But our job is to even minimize that and get it to a point where you are so good at understanding what's happening in the human body that you 
you have that ability to make that impact faster, better, and cheaper. So can you envision a day when you can go from the computer model Absolutely. direct to humans? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not tomorrow, but it is coming. And uh, there are great companies here locally, uh, one of which is Aspect Biosystems. These folks are printing um, human tissue, 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So I can envision a future. We're still far from it, but I can envision a future where if you're interested in breast cancer or if you're interested in liver cancer, you can print actual liver organ or breast organ and do your testing in that context without even having to harvest it from anywhere that, exactly wow but we are and that's the beauty of where we're getting to in tomorrow today we still have to learn and at the same time do tomorrow we'll just do so you're moving into clinical testing how far are we away from actually being able to benefit directly as the general public from the work that you're doing um Clinical trials is a long process. We have two assets, two programs in uh, clinical testing in human patients. Drugs coming to market, I mean, I could tell you that we, we've shaved a lot of time already. Um, our first drug could be in the market in about uh, roughly 2023. Well, and that's I'm, not very far off. No, and, no. I'm, and I'm being conservative there because uh, we're still in the business of science and science has a lot of curveballs to throw at you and we haven't figured it all out. Um, so depending on how well we've done our job, we could be out sooner, but conservatively, you know, around 2023 is a good time where I think the general public, should everything go well, can benefit from what we're doing. So do we have the talent pool here that you're able to draw on to be able to continue to build this out or are you having to bring people in from elsewhere? From the get-go at Zymeworks, we wanted to retain the talent and reverse the brain drain. And in some respects, uh, bring expats back, not just non-Canadians, mm -hmm. but bring, or sorry, not just Canadians, bring Canadians back, bring non-Canadians here and retain Canadians here. I often joke about the fact that uh, we are all taxpayers yeah. and um, some of that tax money goes to all of our universities. I am unaware of a memo that said our job is to pay those taxes so the universities can get it so they can train the best for other countries. Mm -hmm. We are excellent at exporting our talent yes better than probably any other north american country we we train the best but we can't retain the best so at zymeworks and in fact even d-wave our job is to figure out how to retain the best mm -hmm. and tell the rest of the world that we're also open for business in bringing their best here mm -hmm. so you can I think about Mark Romero at the uh, Michael Smith Foundation. He came back, but for the longest time, he said, the community doesn't exist to give me the opportunity to do the work that I want to do. And so you want to be able to continue mm -hmm. to attract those kind of people back. You know, everything has to start somewhere. If mm -hmm. we all sit around and say it doesn't exist, therefore I'm not going to do it, then nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. uh, as we were discussing earlier, Guys like Haig Ferris don't understand that. Guys like Haig Ferris go, yeah, we don't have it, so let's start it. Mm -hmm. Who's with me? <laughs> and what we are doing is we're, yeah, fighting an uphill battle, but we're winning it. And by having successes at Zymorx or having successes at D-Wave, we're showing we can have anchor companies headquartered here with offices around the world as a global company and we're able to give the best of UBC, SFU, Canada, a place to stay, to be excited about what they're doing, knowing that they have a purpose in a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And hopefully through our success, more companies get to do the same. We're just paving the path. 
Right. So I had Gordon McCulley from the Center for uh, Drug Research in, and he's talking about like the biggest challenge we have here is to be able to retain people like you and Zymeworks and so on. Your intention, <laughs> I'm gonna not trying to put you on the spot, but your intention is to continue to build this out here and build that community. 500%. Isn't? I've I've had many opportunities to leave. Uh, my wife is Canadian. My, my kids are Canadian. My life is here. Um, the best parts of my life have been here. Why would I leave? Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel there is no reason to leave. Uh, with what we can do with technology today, uh, you, you're just a plain ride away. And I believe it's an excuse to say, well, only if I was in Massachusetts or only if I was in California, I would really be doing better. I don't think that's necessary. Well, we have you. <clears throat> we have companies like uh, Stem Cell Technologies. Like we're, we, we truly are developing that center of, of excellence. Where do you see this all going in the next 10 or 15 years if we collectively embrace it and support it? Well, the promise that I will make you is I'm going to make that if a reality, even if I have to do it myself. So that will be the offshoot of not only tackling cancer, but you're going to say, we're going to, we're going to make this happen. We are going to make this happen, period. And this does not depend on any provincial government or any federal government. Ultimately, the feds and the provincial folks should be a member of this, but not the driver of this. And for too long, We've been dependent on the provincials or the federals to take the initiative. I'm taking the initiative. And your selling point, I'm, up till now, people have gone, well, look at what a beautiful place it is. But your selling point now is, look at what a beautiful opportunity this Absolutely is. Absolutely is. You, for any company, they have to realize that here they can be a big fish in a little pond. Why do you want to be a little fish in a big pond? Mm -hmm. And here you have immense opportunity around you. You have tons of angel investors. You have tons of folks that are graduating and want to stay here and work here. And if you are doing good work, everything will come to you. So <clears throat> let me finish off by coming back to DesignWorks. You've got two, pro two products that are in the works right now. What will we be looking forward to seeing in the next few years? What you want to see from Zymeworks is you want to see our products getting to market and getting to the general public, but you also want to see that flow continuing. You want to see more innovation from us. You want to see more growth from us. You want to see us be more of a leader in our community to shape it in the way it should be. And it shouldn't be about us. We should just be a catalyst in the bigger picture. And we're very, very proud to call ourselves a member of this community and myself, the rest of our team, everyone is committed to, we're here, we love what we do, we love why we do it, what else we're we gonna do? Well, you speak to the exciting future, I think that exists for us here and what our vision of British Columbia is. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah.